bad, not bad. I hope the other students don't realize that I'm actually utilitarian philosopher Peter Singer. Who are you? I don't remember you being a student in this class. Oh, I'm new. My name is P- um... That is to say, my name is Potato. Potato. Oakdale. Potato Oakdale. Yeah, that's the ticket. You guys better go get started on your projects. I gotta go take phone calls from my family. I'm Snake, Snake Jones. Does, in, does anyone know what infanticide is? It's where a parent or other person kills an infant within the first year of their lives. And in my opinion, I don't think it's a terrible idea. I'm, I mean, based on what Peter Singer uh, thinks, that is. Say, Potato, you seem to know a lot about Peter Singer's views. Can you tell us what he believes about infanticide? Now hear me out, everybody. Peter Singer says that babies are not born self-aware. So, since young babies do not know who they are, Singer downgrades the newborn to the status of a non-person. But if the newborn is a non-person, they don't have a right to life. Therefore, it is okay to terminate them to serve the preferences of the parents, especially if their continued existence would cause great misery and suffering for the parents. So, if the parents have a girl and they wanted a boy, would killing the infant be justified? No, James B. James. But according to Singer's point of view, it is okay to kill the baby if it's severely disabled and incapable of living a happy life. That is messed up. Is it? I mean, after all, since the baby's not self-aware yet, it's not going to know it's being terminated. You mean killed, don't you? That's right, James B. But only because the baby's continued existence would increase the amount of pain and suffering in the world more than if it was terminated. I find you strangely attractive, Peter Oakdale. But shouldn't all life hold value? No, it should not. Oh, I mean, Singer says no, it should not. Because you also have to consider if the same time and resources put into maintaining the life of someone that cannot be happy is better than giving life to a person who can, who can be happy. And a severely disabled infant will suffer greatly in its life if it's allowed to live. So, by the greatest happiness principle, infanticide is justified in such a case. I think that's terrible. Infanticide is never justified. Oh, I'm just explaining Peter Singer's view. Well, I'll move to another group now. See you, wankers. Wankers? That's not an American expression. They use that word in Australia, though. Hmm, I wonder. I wonder. Crazy what happened to Fred last week. I remember it as if it was yesterday. Yiddy, yiddy. And I say Peter Stinger's book, The Life You Can Save, is the bomb. And I say it's stupid, Mulberry Jr. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Tony Random. And for Fred Starbuck here, it appears that there is no brain activity. He looks, well, he looks terrible. terrible. Yes, uh, Mr. Starbuck appears to be in what we call a permanent coma. Anybody know what his last words were? I think it was out. <laughs> there are two options. We could keep him on life support or uh, we could pull the plug and have him uh, pass as peacefully as possible. Yeah, I say pull the plug. Pull, pull the, the plug. plug, pull the plug. To live the rest of his life like that, that's a shame. But all life is sacred, so what other choice do they have? Well, I think it's morally wrong for his family to keep him on life support. Hold on there, Potato. That is, that is up to his family to make that decision, not you. But think about it, McCord. All those resources could be better used and help far more than one person who is not even going to recover. But Fred can't even decide if he wants to be pulled off life support. What if his family doesn't want to be pulled off life support? Oh, and by the way, I've figured out your true identity. You are Peter Singer. And just who do you think you are? Well, usually, I'm Chris McCord, ethics teacher at Kirkwood Community College. But today, I'm Justice. I'm gonna kick your ass. Well, you're just a fat, beady-eyed hack, you bloody wombat. Well, Mr. Singer, I've been training for this moment since my colonoscopy. <laughs> Let's take this outside. I can't afford to place all these chairs and tables that are about to get crushed by your writhing corpse. 
Fair enough, mate. Suck up the sound. Long, you hack. No. Somebody wants to.